Now, there is a little bit of a tendency to always go ooh about the German vehicles and perhaps not really look at some of the British successes. And the vehicle going round now, again, just before the war, competition, we want a small scale car, that becomes the Daimler Dingo. We want a larger, larger armoured car, that becomes this Daimler armoured car. And uh, they had problems in the sense of manufacturing space, uh, delays. It doesn't actually go into service till about later in 41, even though it's designed just before World War II. They're almost brother and sister vehicles, the Dingo and the Daimler. They take the turret from the Tetra, the light tank, two pounder gun in it. They've got a Daimler pre-war engine in the back. This is a very sophisticated vehicle in 1941 when it starts seeing action. It can reverse out of trouble, it's got a rear steering wheel as well, the commander can drop down, driver still pressing the pedal, and he can steer backwards to get that vehicle out of trouble. But that Daimler armoured car, again, like the Dingo, very, very successful was wheeled armour by the British forces. Now this one's something called the M16 half track followed by the SDKFZ-7 half-track. Germany and America really went to town on half-tracks in the 30s. They liked the experimental, let's try and make vehicles. Wheels at the front, tracks at the back, and they took their ideas from the French Crossley Congress. Um, Congress used to work at one point for the Tsar. Um, he was looking at putting track vehicles together. Lots of countries like the idea of them for their off-road mobility. Uh, the German SDKFZ-7, it's used to really tow guns, artillery pieces. This is a late war version of it. Again, with the Germans as the war progresses, they have to simplify some of the build standards. So early on, you may see pictures of these with uh, what look like uh, seating arrangements across the back for the crew to sit on, lockers to store ammunition. Later in the war, where this one was built, they're doing a very simple wood body on because they need to produce them quickly. And again, with a lot of this German equipment, the best units had these as track vehicles. The vast majority of German artillery is still being towed by horses. Um, right the way through the war, they are not a fully mechanised army. Now, the American half track again. They look in the uh, 1920s, 1930s, that age of experimentation, they have a go at trying to work out what's going to be the best one if we do go to war. Their war plan is basically, we're going to throw money at the issue when the time comes, and it works for them. They get the front of an M3 uh, scout car, wheels on the back, wheels on the front, and they marry it to attract rear vehicle lorry. And they join those two things together, and they make about 38,000 of these half-track vehicles. This particular one, the M16, is the model with those four 0.50 calibre Brownings in the back, used for anti-aircraft use. By the time they're landed in Normandy, there's not much of a Luftwaffe left as a, as a threat, so they tended to be used on ground targets as well. And uh, they saw service right into the Korean War, lots of countries used it much longer afterwards. Now the SDK has been sent privately out by Bruce Compton in his collection. Uh, people say, when these things come from? That one, after the war, there's a pair of them being used in a French quarry. Uh, because again, as soon as you can't go to the sign, if you're an average Frenchman, you're going to be thinking, well, there's a useful vehicle there. So they use for it, uh, the wheat on it, very good, very useful. And uh, again, some years later, all restored, all the bodywork put back on it. Um, so it was likely it was in service.